So I think that most people out there by this point that watch my videos actually know that I'm a parent and I have two young children, uh, both of which are, are really fantastic, a, a boy and a girl. The boy is the oldest at five and the girl is three years of age. And as a parent over the last couple of years, you know, there, there have been these phases that we've gone through. And I think there's many, many more phases to come, but we've been through these phases of, in the beginning, they didn't do much. They didn't do much of anything. You could put them in the middle of a room on the floor and you can come back however long later and they would still be in that spot. You just, you just wanted them to do more. <laughs> you wanted them to do more than just lay there and you know uh, stare at you. And then there was the phase where they start to do things and they start to get into things and then and you wish that they didn't move so much. <laughs> and you're like, can you, can you just stay still? Can you just stay still and not get into all of the things that you're getting in? And then as you know, as they continue to get older, you know, there are these various phases where you you wish that they were this or you wish that they were that. And um, it's just been very, very interesting. And and we are we're in a phase now with with the boy who who just turned five in December. We're in this phase with him where he is now in something called I think it's TK, which is like a a pretty a pre kindergarten class that is essentially preparing him for kindergarten. And he's actually going to be going to this uh, really cool school uh, come August. And so he's in there where he's it's basically a transitional time for him. And, uh, you know, he is making the adjustment. He's making the adjustment of going from the little kids class, if you will, to this this TK transitional kind of program where, you know, he he isn't playing all the time and he's expected to kind of sit still and uh, my wife was telling me this story the other day where, uh, you know, the, the teacher asked the class if if any of them wanted to go to another teacher's class. And this is a younger teacher's class, right, where, where it's not this this transitional care kind of thing. It's something else it's for younger kids. And uh, it was more of a rhetorical question. And my boy blurts out, I don't want to go. You know, he he is still trying to make this transition of you know, of clearly recognizing rhetorical questions, right? But also learning how to to control his impulses and to control his behavior. And and we are we're working with him on these things. And you know, he he does these things now. Or and I kind of ask him these questions of like, why are you doing that? Why are, why are you pulling all of the petals off of the flower? <laughs> why are you? you know, playing in the soap and getting the soap all over the floor. Why are you doing this? What are you thinking? You know, um, we were at soccer earlier today and, you know, the kids are running these these drills and he's one of the youngest kids in the class and he's like laughing while they're running and he's still in the front of the pack. But because he is laughing and not necessarily focused on what he is doing, he isn't going as fast as he could, right? He isn't paying as close attention as he needs to because he's just out of control. He's just, uh, you know, they're, they're standing there, the coach is giving directions and he's bouncing up and down. And it's just like, I just need you to control yourself. I need you to focus on what it is that is right in front of you, you know? So we're, we're working with him, trying to get him to gain better control of his impulses, get better control of his emotions, get better control of what it is that he is doing, you know? And by now you're probably uh, wondering if if you clicked on the right video. <laughs> probably like, what is this video? What is this that I am listening to right now? Where is he going? You know, um, as I examined the behaviors of my boy, you know, over these last couple of, of weeks and, and maybe, you know, two months or so, I could not help but draw some comparisons to to our hobby and, and specifically to, to me and to my behaviors and how I approached the hobby when I, when I came back into it after a very, very long hiatus. You know, when I came back into the hobby, I was pretty much like a like a five year old. <laughs> I was like a five year old. I had no control. I had no focus. I was everywhere. I was bouncing up and down, and I was just. Sp 
spending money. I was spending money just about on any and everything. If, if it looked hot, if it looked good, if, I mean, loosely looked good, right? If it were a book that was in front of me, I was buying it. I was just, I did not have focus. Did not have focus. I was pulling the petals off of the flower for no good reason, without any explanation other than my impulse told me to do so, therefore I did it. I was not thinking about the consequences of my actions. I was not thinking about the repercussions of what would come next. I was simply doing what felt good and what was there and, and, and I, I, I thought about it, so therefore I did it. That book popped up, I bought it. I found it in the long band, I bought it. Somebody said that there was a chance that something could happen to this character at some point. I bought it. I did it. I did not have focus. I did not have control. I was just doing whatever it was that struck my fancy. And thankfully, I was able, after making lots of mistakes <laughs> and wasting a lot of money, I was thankfully able to gain some semblance of control of my behaviors and, and my actions. A couple of people have reached out to me asking whether I got in on the Hell, Hell, Hell Risen and the Batman 89, you know, that was going on. And, and the answer is no. The answer was no. I, I did not get in on that. I did not attempt to buy any, did not look into it, didn't do any of it. Uh, because there are things that I am focused on that I am trying to accomplish that, that have yet to be revealed to anybody uh, other than, you know, my wife. Um, there are things that I am working on that require me to be focused and it requires me to block out all of the outside noise. And this is not a criticism. This is not a criticism of anyone out there that went out and bought those books, right? This is not that, right? This is me basically saying that I have the ability to have a myopic focus on a goal and a task that is before me. And because I have that ability to focus on that goal, that objective, I have this uncanny ability to be able to block out all noise. And I'm not tempted. I'm not tempted to do it because I know that what I am working towards is going to be so much more, it's going to be so much greater than the short-term satisfaction that may come from this thing or that thing or this opportunity or that opportunity. I am so focused on that thing and that belief. And, and what I am working on, I'm gonna be honest with you, it is, it is a daunting task. It is a daunting task. And you think that you might know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna tell you right now that you do not know. There are literally only three people that know what it is that I am working on. But but my point isn't to try to, to dangle some secret out in front of you guys. That's not what I'm trying to focus on. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, in my opinion, you wanna be less like that five-year-old that is out of control, that five-year-old that cannot control one's emotions. You want to be a little bit more in control of what it is that you are doing with your dollar because a, a five-year-old doesn't have access to a credit card or to a banking account <laughs> or to a debit card. They don't have the cash that we have to, to live out our impulses. You know what I'm saying? They, but that we don't necessarily have that parent that will look at us and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? What sense does that make? We don't have that. So we have to become that for ourselves. We have to put these controls and these parameters in place to give us focus. Because if we don't, we will be that five-year-old that is just out of control, just doing things with no rhyme or reason and working towards nothing other than Whatever someone says is the hot thing or the right thing or the correct thing. We're not thinking, we're just doing. So I would encourage you. There are lots of videos on my channel that, that talk about the emotions that come with comic book collecting. I have lots of videos on strategy and 
tips and techniques, I, I think many of which are really practical, how to manage money, how to, how to budget, how to make the hobby pay for itself, how to overcome FOMO, how to leverage FOMO in some, in some respects, how to manage regret, and all of these emotions that we deal with as, as collectors and as people who are passionate about this hobby. I would encourage you to take some time to find those videos on my channel because I think that they can help you. I really do. I create content by and large to help people be smarter about this hobby. And as you listen to my videos, what you're going to hear is me never tell you what to do, but I will tell you about some things that you might want to consider, some things that you might want to think about. Because at the end of the day, if I can create a little space for someone to think a little clearly about a challenge, I believe that that person will make a smart decision on how to overcome that challenge or how to address this need or that need. So what I try to do is I try to create space in these videos and I try to provide you with a little bit of stimulus and some things to consider, some things to think about so that you can make an informed decision for yourself. Because I don't want you to be that five-year-old that is not paying attention, that is running in the wrong direction because they did not hear what the directions were. Don't run in the wrong direction. Don't miss the goal because you weren't paying attention. Yeah, these are real things that happen. <laughs> these are real things that happen. And here's what's cool. What I try to do in many ways is I try to take these real life experiences, these things that actually happened to me in my life. And I think about how can I turn this, this, this awkwardness, this, this uncomfortable situation, this, this negative thing into something positive to actually help somebody else. Because rest assured that there is somebody out there that is listening. And it's, it's maybe you, maybe you have kids, maybe you were the parent on the sideline, like I was at the soccer match. And this happened to you, <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't have kids, you might have ever you might have seen a movie. I don't know. Uh, but again, you know, the goal is to create this content that ultimately helps us all become smarter about the hobby. So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to uh, this recording. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. And if you want to reach out to me, you can actually do that on Instagram, which is my preferred uh, Reggie Collects on Instagram, or you can send me an email at Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. And if you're feeling frisky, I definitely want to encourage you to check out the website, ReggieCollects.com. There's a lot of really cool stuff there. There is a a uh, partners page that actually provides you with some fantastic uh, discount codes and, and links and things like that to be able to save some money on some, some things related to the hobby. There's a link to Patreon and all that good stuff if you, if you ever want to contribute to the channel. But uh, there is also a store there where you can buy uh, comics, you can buy box cutters, you can buy t-shirts, all kinds of good stuff there. Uh, so if you're feeling frisky, make sure you check out the website. And like I said, if you need to reach me, I am not too hard to find. Take care.